Hey guys, so this is just a short tutorial on how to use the tool Gel Analyzer. The link to download Gel Analyzer is in the description of this video. It is a completely free piece of software that is really awesome in my opinion, and it can really save you a whole lot of time and really help you out in, in these types of analyses. So the sample that I'm going to be doing in, in this video is actually my friend's gel, um, my friend Brooke. She, she had the foresight to use two molecular use two of her lanes to be molecular markers so as you can see this lane two here I mean theoretically they're the same plasmid but you can definitely see the 121 base pair band here with your naked eye it's a little hard to make out kind of a ghost band but it's definitely there but if Brooke didn't have the foresight to see that um, and only ran lane one personally I really can't see anything in lane one around the 121 region but using gel analyzer you can see that over here, this lane one is transposed, kind of sideways horizontally underneath this spectra right here. And you can see that there is actually a little tiny peak. And this is before, you know, minimizing background. You can actually see the peak there that corresponds to the 121 base pair region. So I would say gel analyzer is really helpful for, you know, seeing what exactly is a band. Sometimes it's kind of hard to make it out in the sort of gradient that forms when you run these lanes. And it's just a tool at your disposal to, you know, find those bands and distinguish them from each other. So I'm going to run through, I think the most helpful way to kind of go through this is just to do an example. So first thing you want to do is just open up gel analyzer, say new analysis. Then make sure you're in the right file here. I saved this picture to my desktop. Um, you can open it in terms of pretty much any file type that is an image. So this is just a JPEG of, of Brooks gel that she ran. And you will be prompted for this light on dark. I would say this is going to be an example of a light on dark for your SDS page gels. I'll show you an example here in a second. I believe that is you will need to use dark on light for that, but this particular one is light on dark. So sometimes it kind of starts off as a little small, so you want to zoom in. The very first thing you want to do is make sure this is selected. It's called Lanes Mode. It's the first button up here at the top. Then after that, you want to click on this Add New Lane button. You'll see a blue plus sign there. And if you can see your gel wells, that is great. Try to aim for the middle of the well and drag all the way down. Try to stay in the center of the lane because your rectangle will kind of branch out from the middle like that. If you mess up, don't worry, you can kind of edit it using this hand tool right there next to your add lane. Once you have it the way you want, you want to do this for each and every single one. So that's the basic idea. Just try to adjust it to be where, you know, if you can't see the wells, just start, you know, uniformly at the top of your, of your JPEG file and go all the way down to the bottom right about where the front line ends. So to save time, I will go ahead and skip to this version here. It should look like this when you've defined all of your lanes, you know, more or less. And once you've defined all your lanes, you're ready to move on to the next phase, which is bands mode. Um, so again, we're only using about three of these six buttons. So we just did the lane selection mode. This is the band selection mode. And then we are going to define the molecular weights of our bands. So since Brooke here has two molecular weight lanes, um, I'm just going to use her number two. It's a little cleaner. You can see that's a peak there, so you can go ahead and define that. You want to click on this add add peak button. And the thing about this is for the longest time I was trying to define it on this image, you can't really do that. You have to go over here to this NMR looking spectra and really just define your peaks over here. And this is really nice down here. You can definitely see there's a peak corresponding to the 121 base pair region. So once you do that, sometimes it doesn't. the last one doesn't always register. What you want to do in that case is just switch back to this button, click on lane 1, and then go back to lane 2, and then you can see it's updated now. So I have all five of my peaks selected. And the idea is you want to do this for each of your lanes. So this is your molecular weight marker. You want to also do this for your DNA sample lanes or you know whatever your samples are. So basically, you know, to save time, um, I'm going to skip ahead here to, to this version. This is the exact thing that I did here for each of these lanes. You just select it. I, I was a little. I like to be a little generous at first because it's a little hard to tell. You know what exactly is a peak? This one, that's a little questionable. 
this one you can definitely see there's a peak there that's a peak there but you want as much peaks as possible so when you're doing this analysis and kind of looking at what the expected bands uh, positions are you can kind of look back and see like every possible band that you that you have it just makes things a lot easier so once you do this uh, just kind of make sure everything is defined you'll, you'll see these little dots you want to switch over to this mode called molecular weight calibration mode um, you know, don't worry too much about this quantity calibration mode. The the background subtraction mode is pretty helpful, but uh, I might go into that in a different video. But for the purposes of this class, really all you need is the molecular weight calibration mode. So what we want to do is go through here. I have the values for the molecular weights over here. So the first one is 1857 base pairs. So again, make sure you're right here. And when you switch to this button, you will notice if you hover over the dot that corresponds to the band, you will have a hand. And you're just going to type in 1857. The next one is 1058. Next one is 929. This is the 383 base pair. And finally, the very faint ghost band of 121. Oh, this did not take. Make sure you hit enter after each band that you put in, or they won't take. So once you do that, you'll see that in your table down here, your molecular weight column has automatically been populated. That will generate a curve here, and they actually give you the crazy looking equation down here of this curve. Um, now the the really useful part for this is that I can go to any so I'm gonna switch over to lane selection mode uh, go back to here and y you can see that for these individual bands the values have automatically been populated um, you, you'll see that th this corresponds for example this uh, that right here is roughly 847 base pairs uh, this one is around 400 105 so it's a really useful tool in terms of just extrapolating. I would say these values are good for double checking yourself. Definitely go through the protocol of generating your, you know, natural log standard weight curve, and um, show your sample calculations and how to calculate your molecular weight values as you've been doing. But this is a good way to just kind of check because against their equation right here. One thing that's really cool, I think, is you can actually determine what these band values are, and they're outside of the molecular weight region. Um, it's surprisingly accurate from what I've read, actually. Um, but really, this is just a good way to check yourself. Um, if you are reporting distances, it's not always required, I know, in our protocols, but keep in mind that the RF values, um, if you know the total amount of migration distance here, you can just multiply your RF value by that, and that will get you the distance in centimeters that each of these bands migrate. So, for example, if the total distance is 10, that this first band has migrated 4.58 centimeters. Uh, personally, that's what I like to do. You can also use pixels. Um, I think Connor knows a good program for, for pixels, but I would say even uh, Microsoft Paint would be great for that. Um, but again, you don't really have to report these values, but it, it's a really good way to kind of uh, see how far the bands have traveled relative to each other. Uh, down here you can see this one has traveled 5.32 centimeters and um, again all of these should be automatically populated so in a nutshell that's pretty much how you use gel analyzer really straightforward I would say by far its most useful property is just being able to you know pick out these bands on this spectra here um, and you can you can see really where the bands would correspond to in the ideal world you would have really nicely defined bands such as the sample bands that they provided you over here. This is actually a picture from their website, from the Gel Analyzer website. And as you can see, everything's a singlet and it's really obvious. But, you know, it's not always like that. And if you ever are in a case where your molecular marker, that's pretty significant. You know, you, you think there's a band here, you can definitely use it to visualize that. So the last thing I want to say is this is possible to use for any type of workup um, such as an SDS page gel
I have the picture here. This is actually Courtney's SDS gel. Um, sh she, I believe, is on dark, dark on light mode because the background is light. But she's defined each of her peaks here beautifully. Uh, th this number five, just keep in mind, you can probably do up to four different bands. Um, and that you can kind of see where they would correspond to four different bands. But I hope this video was at least a little bit helpful. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to feel free to ask me.